Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Today I'm going to share with you something a little bit different. I have created an 11 and a half inch diameter circle art journal and it's been created using heavy duty watercolour cardstock. Uh, in my case it's from uh, De La Rowney and also utilising the back cover off the uh, watercolour pad for my journal covers and I've covered the front with some uh, a piece of 12 by 12 from Indigo Blue. So I will show you how I've created this and where I got the inspiration from. So to begin with the basic construction and how I got the shape. This is my waste paper basket from my craft room and all I've done is just turned it upside down and I'm drawing around with a pencil and this is a 16 by 12 De La Rowney heavy duty watercolour card pad. Now all I've done is just drawn around the circle as you can see there and then I'm just going to tear the sheets out and then cut them by hand. I don't have a 12 inch or a large circle cutter so I'm going to have to do mine the old fashioned way. So I drew around the waste paper bin about 10 times on the watercolour card and here you are, you can just see me cutting out one of the circles now. I'm going to do them all by hand, so yes I'm going to have achy fingers. And the grey board at the back of the pad is what I use for the front and the back covers of the journal. I do have two of these watercolour pads so I used both the backs for the front and back of my circular journal. So I'm going to whiz through this and I'll join you when I've finished cutting out all my big circles. So this is a sheet of 12 by 12 it's a thick um, printed cardstock from um, Indigo Blue. This is from their Adtastic set. So I've cut out a 11 and a half inch circle that I'm going to stick onto the back. So I don't know whether to just splash this stuff all the way around it, all the way over the top. This is just an experiment to see whether or not it will buckle or not. Um, I suspect it probably may do, or it may dry far too quickly, in which case I may have to find something else. So it's experiment, experiment, experiment. Okay, so I've done that. I'm just going to drop that straight over the top. Okay, I'm not going to do that just off camera because there's a glue all over my juice saying that. Where are my wet wipes? There we go. Cool. Things are dropping and falling all over the place. Okay, is that sticking? Probably not. Let's get some more under there. Uh, if I actually do the back as well, just on those seams underneath, I can feel it's starting to curl, but that's okay. Now with any luck, this should dry. flat. He says, crossing his fingers. Let's get rid of some of that. Okay. Bring the heat gun in.
Okay, it looks like it's going to work, but it's still not as thick as I wanted it to be. Now, I do already cut one out of the grey um, grunge board, if you like. Um, this is was the back um, piece of card on my watercolour pad. So, big enough, because it was the same size as the sheets, uh, I did get a little bit of that on, but that's okay. But what I might end up doing is just covering that directly. I may just stick that onto there, or find another piece and stick another bit. So I do have more than one. He says, what's he done with them? Oh, they're all on the floor. There they are. So we do have this one too. So I might just stick with PVA and just stick that rather than trying to use the matte medium or the Mod Podge matte medium. So I think just using bog standard craft glue on the back might be the best idea. So what I'll do is I will grab some glue and let's see if we can do it. Let's do it, do it, do it. And just put a bead all the way around the outside. Like so, and then we can start cross hatching. God, this is not very good glue. I think I've left it standing for too long. There's probably a great big lump right inside the tube. Give it a shake up. Yeah, it's got lumps in. I don't want to have to fish it out with. Um, let's have a look, see what I've got in here. the problem with craft PVA. Let's see if we can get rid of that onto our wet wipe. It's ridiculous. How can you get lumps in the nozzle when you've already had it coming out? Definitely something in there. All it takes is a little lump. Right, let's try again. Oh, so much better. should do me. Now, if I turn that over and then place that down, right in the middle, give it a bit of a smush. Everywhere. and then give it a rub excellent okay I'm now going to put that to one side and leave that to dry naturally and then I'm going to trim off the excess 
and then find a sanding block and then just go around the edges to do that. Now the other one has started to set but it's still not quite as heavy and as thick as I wanted it so I think I will probably cut that back out and then find some more of the grey board, the mount board or whatever it is and then do the same thing again so I will see you in a bit when I found some more. Okay I found some more, I've drawn my circle, I've cut the sheet out um, but instead of cutting this out first I think I'm going to just glue it straight down and then cut round it that way it will be a bit of a better fit so I'm going to do exactly the same thing again I'm going to take the PVA and I'm going to put a thin bead all the way around the outside as near to the edge as I can get it don't mind if it just goes over a little bit this time and then we'll start doing our cross hatching with the glue Get some air back in there. Okay, so that's one way, and now we'll do the next. Okay. So now I've got the glue all over it and I've put plenty on because I want to make sure it does stick down perfectly. And the reason I've angled it over to the left hand side of the card is because it still leaves me that to be able to play with if I need it for something else. So I'm just going to gently rub that down. Doesn't matter if the glue comes out from underneath. It will dry clear. I just want to make sure that it's all rubbed down nicely. Now what I could have done is taken a brayer. Let me see if I can find one. Uh, da, 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 stamp box. No stamp press crosses. It will be with my jelly plate. There we go. Now well, this will help just push out any unwanted bubbles. I am bothered if I get a little bit of the glue on the paper. That should theoretically hold that down. Now I'm going to leave that to dry for a good few hours before I cut it out. So throw that one out the way and then bring the other one back in and then just do the same thing again but this feels as though it's stuck down pretty good. I don't think I've got anything to worry about. So let's leave those to dry for a couple of hours and then I'll be back. Hi guys, so it's now been a couple of hours and it's dried thoroughly and all I've done is literally just take a cutting mat and a knife and I've just gone around the edge with the knife to cut it out. Very, very quick and easy to do. And then I took a crocodile, a hole punch and just punched two holes into the one side. I then used this one as a template, laid it over the top, put pencil mark through and then did the same thing with the back cover or the front cover depending on which way around I decide to go with it. I think I'm going it's that way I've gone with it. So that's the front and that's now my back. And then all I did was use that the same one on the cutout sheets and used that as a template to and punched out all the holes for my um, 
for my inclusions. So all I need to do now is just to line up all of the holes so that I can thread them all together and I'm going to use book rings for mine. So it might just be easier if I take one and just thread that through and then just add them to it. So each time just add one over the top. So much easier doing it this way. And then there's my front cover. And then the hole is big enough, no, it's not big enough, so I have to do that all again. Luckily, once the holes are threaded through, it takes literally seconds. And then I can just add the back one. And when they're together, that makes it so much easier then to line up your second book ring. Because it'll just go straight through, there you go, and then just clip it together. Now what that does, if you wanted to use smaller book rings you could do, but I've used fairly large ones. Oh, I've missed one. That's easy enough. Just open it up. So this is how easy, how easy it is to be able to add extra sheets. See if your hands are shaking like mine for some strange reason at the minute. I've just had a cup of coffee, so that's probably what it is. And then rejoin together, and there we go. We then have our big, um, our big circular art journal. Now, the original idea for this isn't mine. I did see um, a, a lady on YouTube who created a circular journal herself, but hers folded down the middle, so it was a semicircle, and then when she opened it up, it was a full circle. And that lady was called Sarah Trump, with two Ps. Now, Sarah is one of the two girls that have taken over the administration of Journal 52. So I went on to Sarah's YouTube channel just to see what kind of things she did, what her style was, and I saw this circular art journal, and I was just blown away. Because I've never had an art journal that, just by its actual shape, is inspiring enough to do things. I mean, you, just the different um, ways that you can lay out a circular journal are just amazing. I mean, you, you can put text all, text all the way around the outside, you can put circular elements in here, you can just reserve it for circular focal points like flowers, sunflowers, the moon, the sun, things like that. I mean, you can literally, just the shape is enough to inspire you. So I'm going to keep this, I will decorate the front a little bit more. I want to edge um, these edges here with some washi tape and I'm going to paint it, I think add some colour to it, maybe a little texture paste as well and do the same to the back. So you'll see me do that in, uh, in a future video. But for now, if you want to see Sarah's version of her circular journal, now hers is slightly bigger than mine, um, Sarah's is 12 inch because she uses uh, an LP record for those of us that are old enough to remember LP records as her front cover and she's cut it down the middle and uses that and she does a um, themed music themed pages in that journal. Um, so check out Sarah, I'll put her uh, YouTube channel in the description area below so you can see her and she is the mastermind behind the circular journal but for me I prefer it so that I can work on the full circle and all I'll do is just take the pages out from the book rings, work on it, and then when it's done, put it back together again. So I can keep on adding this until I can't get any more pages in here. So that is my new, um, this is 11 and a half. So I managed to cut that out of um, a 12 by 12. So I've got a bit fuzzy, there we go. So you can get an 11 and a half from um, a 12 by 12, or if you want to try and get a full 12 by 12, then why not? If you have a scanning cut machine, it's gonna be even better, because you can just literally do a full 12 inch page, and you don't even have to hand, hand cut it. Or if you've got a circle cutter that does large ones. I think Sarah said she used a Martha Stewart circle cutter to do hers. 
um, all I've done as you've seen is um, draw around my waste paper basket a plastic waste paper basket and then cut mine out by hand but I'm sure there are other ways to do it out there which is you know and you can do them whatever size you want it doesn't have to be 12 inches it doesn't have to be 11 it can be 10 it can be 8 you can even do a 6 inch one so have fun with that and then let me see how your if you do one of these you know put a if you've got a blog if you've got a youtube channel then put a link in the description area below so i can see how you've um interpreted making this circular journal and let's see people using circular journals okay that's all from me and i'll be back very soon so I hope you enjoyed that video and you're inspired to make your own. If you did enjoy the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up so YouTube know that you want to see more from me and they will recommend my channel to other people who may not yet have discovered me. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.